Hi, and welcome to this week's Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. And this week we're going to talk about something that I can't say enough about. And really, I should say less about it, because it's the concept of less is more. And less is more is something that I think that people don't really start picking up on until they are an advanced player and they start listening to um, recordings of themselves and realizing that they're putting too much in. Um, just because you can do all kinds of fancy stuff in your playing doesn't mean that you should. And just because you can play notes and melody and, and um, uh, rhythms really fast like a bluegrasser doesn't mean that you should. And if you listen to some of the best songs out there, they are incredibly spare and sparse. And um, so this is almost like an anti-technique. All right, this is something that is going to help you open up negative space, uh, empty space in your playing and in your sound to um, really um, highlight the main parts and the parts that are the most important. And it's great because it gives you all kinds of space in your playing. Let me ask you this. Have you ever gone to a jam session where there were too many people? And it happens a lot at festivals. Um, there's too many people and everybody's bashing away on their instruments and you start to play and you don't hear any difference <laughs> and so you stop to, you stop playing and you don't hear any difference um, because there's just this wall of sound and it's really easy to get into that it's easy to get into it in the recording studio too where you've got uh, too many notes you've got too much sound going on and it's too crowded so we're going to talk about uncrowding your music, okay? Now, to do this, I'm going to give a couple of examples. I'm going to give a, a song example and then an instrumental exa example, okay? Um, because um, it applies in both situations, all right? So, for our song example, let's use um, Hard Times Come Again No More. And I don't have a lyric sheet here in front of me, and it's been a while since I've done this song, so um, I might fudge the lyrics a little bit. Um, the lyrics are uh, one of the most beautiful things about this song, um, but I don't have them in front of me, and I have my 55-year-old brain that is um, um, not retaining um, all the lyrics very well, so bear with me on that, but um, um, we can use this as an example of this, all right? Now, a lot of people will, will uh, start a song out and they'll strum like this underneath. Let us pause in life's pleasures and count its many tears while we all sup sorrow with the poor. And what they're doing is they're keeping the beat going like this, and they're going strumba, 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 strumba. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but what if you didn't play all that? What if you just played one chord per chord change? Okay. Now, first of all, you're going to have to replace that beat you were keeping the beat with your thumb on the strings, okay? So replace it with space. You still have to keep the beat somewhere in your body to feel it. So feel it in your toe, you know, bounce your foot, or you can even keep space, kind of conduct it here in the, in the air, or just take your hand off your harp and keep the beat going in front of it, but don't touch the harp. And what you end up with is Let us pause in life's pleasures And count its many tears While we all sup sorrow with the poor 
There's a voice that will linger forever in our ears. Oh, hard times come again no more. It's the song, the sigh of the weary. Hard times, hard times come again no more. Many days you have lingered around my cabin door. Oh, hard times come again no more. Okay, then maybe you can add a, a couple of other little sounds under it in the next verse. Let us seek mirth and beauty and music loud and gay. While the frail forms are fainting at the door Though their voices are silent They're crying all the day All oh, hard times come again no more See a little bit more, okay? But I've, I've taken out all that All the sawing back and forth Okay, and I've added space to it. All right, so consider doing that, and you can do it on any song. Um, it takes a little practice, and it takes restraint. Sometimes you feel like you're holding the horses back, you know, to keep from um, adding too much um, glitter to the the uh, uh, to the mix uh, when you do that. Um, but really you get a much more satisfying result because what you're doing when you're singing is your your voice needs to be the main thing that's out there okay and I know that a lot of people are a little shy about their voices but a song is a song and the lyrics and the melody are the most important point of the song so you can then pick up what you're doing when you get into an instrumental and there again you don't want to get too much going on where you're filling in with too much fancy stuff and this is uh, I am the worst at this okay I I put in all kinds of fancy lines and cross runs and all of this and uh, uh, then I listen to it and I go it's too much I need to I need to um, cut out uh, about three quarters of what I'm doing to add space into it okay so um, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt just because you can play fast just because you can play a lot of notes doesn't mean you should alright so now let's talk about uh, instrumental um, use of this, all right. And for this, I'm going to use a a tune that uh, I actually made up a long time ago. It's called Maroon Bells, and um, it's on my um, Auto Harp Revealed in Cloud CD, and um, it goes like this, all right.
as the song progresses, I might start putting in a little bit more at a time. Just a little bit more, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, so that by the end, I've got sort of a... See, that's by the end. And so the idea is that by creating all of that space where nothing is happening, it gives me a lot of headroom. Uh, uh, there's a lot of room to go places in the subsequent verses by adding more and more and more to it. But I want to start out with this big broad, expansive nothingness um, to create that space, which then I gradually fill, verse by verse, chorus by chorus, repetition repe by repetition, so that I'm not using it all up right away. Okay, So hold your horses, rein it in, Add space to your playing, less is more. Okay? Thanks for watching Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. Remember to subscribe so that you get all of the lessons when they first come out and you don't miss a thing. And uh, consider um, some private lessons if you like. Um, I teach via Skype online. Um, it's very cost effective, it's great. You don't have to leave your living room to get uh, an auto harp lesson with me. And um, um, I'm so enjoying meeting so many people and working with them and uh, the the help that I'm giving them and the feedback that I'm getting about my online lessons. So go to my website halweeks.com, check that out and um, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time on Stocking the Wild Auto Harp.